What's up ZBrushers? Welcome to Z Fever. My name is Ricky and today we are going to be going over the Z Modeler brush as part of a new feature in ZBrush 4R7. Alright, so the Z Modeler brush is exactly that. It's a brush. It's not a mode. It's not uh, a whole separate unit of ZBrush. It acts alongside of all the standard brushes that you normally use anyway. Uh, so this is really cool because you can go through, make all of your adjustments, and subdivide up, start sculpting, and call it a day. Um, but it takes some knowledge, um, and the reason that I put this video together is because I do understand that it it does usually take uh, a few weeks before uh, they update the videos on uh, Z Classroom and while I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube already most of them are just little uh, sped up uh, demonstrations and while the guys are making some cool stuff it, it doesn't really help anybody and I know that a lot of people have questions I have questions I'm still learning this and um, I, but you know I do know that uh, some of you are chomping at the bits and want to know you know, what do I do, where do I go, how do I get this done? So, um, I'm going to be going over some of the features. I'm going to be running through some stuff that's in the uh, What's New uh, PDF. If you downloaded uh, 4R7, I, I hope that you got it through legitimate means. Um, <laughs> if, if you got uh, your copy of 4R7, it came with uh, a couple of PDFs. One of them is What's New in 4R7. And um, it also came with a 64-bit version of ZBrush. Now, I do want to say, uh, while it does have a 64-bit version, uh, they are still mainly supporting the 32-bit version because ZBrush isn't going to be full 64-bit until ZBrush 5 comes out, and who knows when that will be. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, I will say that uh, I'm even though I've been waiting over a year for this um, it was definitely well worth the wait so let's let's uh, get into this all right so how do you use the Z modeler brush well first of all you have to have it activated I already do it resides in the brush palette and it uh, it runs off of two main principles targets and actions targets are going to be things like your faces your edges your vertices or points and uh, your actions are the things that you do with those so let's see what we have available so if you're hovering over your target in this case the face if you hold down the space bar it's going to bring up this menu now this menu, this menu has four possible drop downs. Right now I have um, the Q mesh brush, uh, Q mesh feature activated. Let's look at the uh, inset function. So you have your action, and then you have what you want to target. Okay, so I want to do an inset on a single poly, right, and then you have modifiers down here and the other drop down that you may see from time to time is options now that depends on which uh, which uh, feature you have activated like see if I go to equalize the only thing I have is is action and targets but if I go to extrude it has some modifiers bridge it's gonna have some modifiers as well as some further options like uh, how how do I want it to bridge do I want it to do an arc you want it to have small round corners, um, you know, and uh, you know the sky's the limit. And a lot of this is going to come from practice, and um, it all depends on how you like to work. So let's do an inset, um, and I'm going to have it set for center and border, and inset each poly. So there we go. The cool thing about this is that. I said, okay, I want it to inset this much. But what if I want to inset here and here? Well, all I got to do is just tap it. And there it goes. So 
so what it what it did is it uh, remembered you know where I went from the previous one and just applied it to the last one. Now this also works on extrusion. So if I go, okay, I want to extrude this side. Well, guess what? I want to do it here too. So just click it, click it. Um, if I were to do that, it's going to extrude it out just as much. Obviously, I didn't have that uh, that inset on there, but it's still going uh, to work around the same parameters, right? So let's move to another section. Let's say, um, okay, well that's cool. I like that. Um, but I want to put some, uh, let, let's uh, put some edge loop somewhere, right? So you can insert an edge loop. You just click on it. Now this is, is uh, corresponding with what my, um, what my modifiers were, right? So I told it I wanted a specified resolution of 8. What if I just want a single edge loop? Okay, now it's not the greatest edge loop in the world. What I'm trying to get to is the bridge function. So, you come through, I can delete a face. So, I'm going to delete those faces. Now, let's say I want to uh, connect these two portions to here. I use my bridge. I can click here, click there, and then drag it out. And it'll connect these two. Well, you might be thinking, well, this is that's that's cool, but it's just really blocky. Well, that's why there is this dynamic subdivision feature here. If I hit D on the keyboard, it's going to give me a preview of what this uh, mesh would look like if I had subdivided it up two levels. Right? It's not actually subdividing the mesh, though. It's just a preview. What's great about this is that now I can go through and say, okay, well, this is a little squishy. Um, what if I want to go through and add some creases to this bad boy? Well, all I got to do is hover over that edge, activate crease. I can crease a complete edge loop, a partial edge loop, a poly loop, which is a whole different area. And then, um, or I can just crease a single edge. So if I run through... and just hit these it's going to start snapping down those those edges and so you can see how quickly you can go through and and make adjustments on the fly and, you know um maybe you know you have that set and you go ah, i don't like that so much you just hit alt click it and it goes away now this isn't anything to write home about this is just for demonstrational purposes but um, I just wanted to give you guys a quick glimpse into what you can do really all this comes down to is your ability to uh, you know your creative ability to make combinations uh, on the fly now uh, something that I really enjoy is um, that I can actually extract this face Hold command or control and drag this off. It's going to separate it from the group. Now, that's cool. What if I was like, okay, well, that's cool, but um, maybe I just want to snap them back. Well, it just bridges it on the fly. I didn't have to go through and, and, and weld anything. It just automatically does it. I can also go back and delete it. You can even go through and um, say, okay, I want these two, I want to uh, do an inset on each of them. Then I come back through with my Q mesh, pull through, 
and now it's going to punch a hole into it. And so you can just build up and build up and build up, you know, um, and this all started from one single cue. And um, I don't know about you guys, but this is this is just fantastic for me because I, you know, I I can get by with uh, my Max uh, Blender is a no go for me, but um, this feels like drawing to me. Um, it's quick, it's intuitive, um, and it's just uh, I I can see this going in so many directions. Uh, I can see uh, concepting. Uh, turning into a whole new realm where it's not it's not just uh, on on painting anymore I can see uh, models being concepted um, you know for production uh, readiness you know there's there are so many possibilities and this this entire thing is already airtight uh, it ZBrush is going to default to triangles or quadrangles it's it's never going to give you an in an in gun uh, because it doesn't like it it's uh, you know uh, that's that's the way that this program has been designed so you can get results really really fast if you're working from a concept you know it's just that much faster so um, I encourage you guys to jump in here start playing around with the menus a lot of this is going to come through uh, just time um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what what everybody comes up with I'm going to try and keep you guys posted as much as I possibly can um, you know, as new things become available, I know that uh, that uh, Joseph Drust and uh, Paul Gabori have uh, already mentioned that there will be some videos coming up on uh, uh, the Z Classroom shortly. Uh, but because I know that sometimes it does take some time, these guys are out touring, giving uh, uh, demos and everything like that. I wanted to at least uh, give someone a resource, and I hope it helps somebody out. Um, so definitely stay tuned as I as I learn continue learning this. I'm going to post whatever I learn, and uh, I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. Other than that, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and happy ZBrushing. Take care, guys.